All righty, guys. Welcome to our weekly outlook. Thank you guys for joining me today. Um, this is our my, my weekly outlook for the week of September 16th, 2018. Um, again, thank you guys for joining me today. If you guys are brand new here today, uh, welcome to my weekly outlook. My name is David Schinkel. I'm the CEO and founder of Positive Traders. Um, Positive Traders have been around since the middle of 2016, so I've been running things for a while now. Um, as promised, guys, with some updates, if you guys have been around for a while, I'm not going to be dragging out these webinars for 30, 40 minutes anymore. Um, it's only going to be about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes each time. Um, I'm just going to go over, give you guys really just the most value I can in the shortest amount of time and go over, just get straight into it with exactly what I'm looking at trading for the week. Um, give you guys some setups. I do, uh, today's will be about five minutes shorter. If you guys have been around for a while and you've already seen it, you don't necessarily have to stick around for it. But if you guys are brand new, you want to learn a little bit about um, what I do, how I trade, that type of thing, my trading style, if you will, or my fundamental technique with compounding, I'm going to be going over that at the end. I'm going to show you guys, if you don't already know, how you can take, if you don't have a ton of money to start with, with, with which a lot of people don't have, um, I'm showing you guys how to take a very small account and grow that to six, seven figures um, over time. So you have the ability to take money from Forex and be able to go in, do whatever you want. You know, maybe, maybe you don't want to be a day trader. Maybe you want to open up a business or, you know, chase your dreams or whatever you want to do. And Forex is a very good vehicle to do that, whether you just want to do it on the side or whether you eventually want to do it full time. So I'm going to go over that at the end, but um, the actual uh, weekly outlook won't last more than 10 minutes, guys. So let's get right into it. If you also have any questions, throw them in the chat and I will get to them um, before the end of this webinar. But looking at the economic calendar, I like to start off with this every single week to just give you guys an outlook and an overview. Maybe you want to write some of these really important things that are coming out. So just know that uh, for today, in about an hour and a half from now, there is a monetary policy meeting minutes for the Australian dollar. That's probably going to cause some volatility on AUD pairs. So just know that tomorrow also is going to be a little wild. Um, very early morning, we have President Mario Draghi, who is the he is the president of the European Central Bank, so the head of the ECB. He's going to be speaking. That's going to cause some volatility on um, any of the euro pairs on the yen um, later. Tomorrow evening, we have uh, an interest rate decision and a policy statement at the same time for the yen. So expect yen pairs to be a big mover on Tuesday evening. Wednesday, we're back at it again with Mario Draghi speaking in the morning. Um, and there's some CPI also early morning for the pound and some GDP, quarter of quarter GDP, so gross domestic product. That's a pretty big one for the New Zealand dollar um, Wednesday afternoon. Thursday is pretty light. Um, there's just some news in the morning for the Swiss franc and the pound. And then Friday is very light as well, which is some news for the CAD in the morning. So a uh, really main thing is there's an interest rate decision for the pound or for the yen on Tuesday. That's the only interest rate decision. But then again, we have Mario Draghi, uh, the euro, obviously a big currency in Forex um, on speaking on Tuesday and Wednesday. So expect some volatility this week, guys. So that's it for the news. Let's get into the technicals and let me give you guys my ideas, okay? So um, I have everything hidden right now. I'm about to pop up and show um, my, my charts. Also, if you guys are hopping in right now, if you guys are brand new, I was mentioning that this actual technical portion is only going to take about 10 minutes at the very end of this. I am going to be going over my strategy and my uh, the whole idea of compounding and, and the growth of being able to grow a small account to a very, very large, you know, a six, seven multiple figure account um, over um, not a very long, not a super long period of time. So I'm going to go over that at the end, but just a little disclaimer, guys. First, also, before I give you guys my opinions right here, these are just that. These are my opinions. This is not financial advice. This is just educational and informational and inter entertainment purposes only. Um, anything that you guys see here is, again, my opinion, okay? So you should only be taking trades that you are, you know, it's your own analysis. This should just, you know, help you guys out or just give you guys my outlook of what I think is going to happen, okay? So um, also, another thing, if you guys are following my Telegram where I posted these charts, it's the same charts as last week, so I'm going to show it in just a moment, but just know that we've had, there's definitely been a little bit of price action that has changed. So I released the, what I'm about to show you guys, um, in my opinion, on Thursday, um, based on this daily candle, pretty much on the dollar indexes, what 
gave me analysis for the rest of these pairs. This was before the volatility on Friday. So I still remain with my bias of what I'm going to show in just a second, but just understand that I am pretty much on the sidelines un until I see more confirmation. So yeah, there we go. Let's just let that load very quickly. Um, let me just remove this. So this is a, I posted a screenshot that looks just about like this inside of Telegram and all of our social media, giving you guys my opinion of the dollar index. So of course this was based on this break, not just a break, but just also just the move, the pattern that we had with a, a breakout, a very, uh, very um, popular manipulation move that we see in the market generally on higher time frames and when you see a large structure. So in this case, we see a very, very large bull flag created. We usually see like a big fake out that way to um, trap buyers. And then we'll see usually that same type of move to the downside before being overall, the original move was bullish in my opinion. So I think we're going to see overall upside on the dollar index. So, um, but again, taking into account Friday's bullish engulfing candle on the dollar index and seeing that strength, um, a lot of times we see these fake moves. We see a lot of people, um, obviously the market only moves from like big money, smart money. So this is like institutions, banks, a lot of people closing their positions early week or I'm sorry, end of week uh, before the weekend. So sometimes the vol volatility that we see on Friday isn't the true move. So I am going to remain with an overall long-term upside on the dollar. Um, Short-term, I still would like to see confirmation. I definitely wouldn't be entering any sells on the dollar, which would be meaning buys on Euro USD because that's the opposite. We're going to look at in just a moment until I see the lows on the dollar broken again. But I do think that this is still a very favorable um, scenario. And if we don't get this immediate downside and see that Friday was a complete fake out, like I, I think we might see, then if we do see some upside, I think it's not going to last very long. Um, at the most, I think we might get to the 50% retracement level of this move. So if we go ahead and fib out and just find out where this 50% retracement level is, I don't think we'll get much higher than pretty much this zone, the, the, the previous highs of just this little structure. So the 50% of this move. Okay. So uh, before moving down again, I think that that's the, that's another favorable scenario. So that's again, why I'm on the sidelines to start this week off. We are in a trade right now. Um, also that we're going to go over um, in the premium group. I'm not going to give you guys the exact coordinates because it is for people that pay for it, but um, we're going to go over the setup. So uh, let's just skip right over to Euro USD. So if you don't already know, if you're new to trading Forex, um, you should definitely have this correlation written down that Euro USD that we're on right now and the dollar index, which is in, in it's a index that measures the strength of the, the US dollar against a basket of other currencies, Euro being the highest um, weighted, um, the highest, highest weight in that basket is uh, Euro USD, so the dollar index and Euro USD literally do the exact opposite of each other. If you look at them without anything, they are an exact mirrored upside down spitting image of each other. So you can expect that anything we talk about, anything to just, just know that moving forward, anytime you see me or anybody, or if you're even looking at the dollar index, that whatever you're talking about with the dollar index, Euro USD is going to do the exact opposite. Okay, so if we're talking about a favorable scenario on the dollar index falling down and moving up, right? That's what I am most favored towards still. Then with Euro USD, I would expect that this pair to spike up and then move down. Um, so again, I think that this is probably still the most favorable scenario, even with that volatility on Friday, because a lot of people could argue, and, it's, and it is definitely a valid argument, right? We have a bearish engulfing candle that was created Friday. We have this pretty strong trend line, which in this case is resistance on the dollar index is that support. And, uh, you know, there could be an, a case for selling Euro USD and buying the dollar right now, but um, we're still very much so in consolidation, right? I, and that's why I like to look at the dollar index personally when I do analysis, because when you look at Euro USD, a lot of people might say it's a clear short. It's, you know, there's, there's no reason not to be shorting right now. But when I look at the dollar index, I also take into account this major zone, which is this major green box, like right where we're at right now, pretty much, which is right around the 95 zone. And it's been major resistance in the past. So I don't think buyers are going to just come in really easily and, and we're going to see price penetrate the 95 level that easily. So 
And if that were to happen, then that means Euro USD would drop, right? But if we to con continue to consolidate or even bounce off of this 95 area, if we bounce off this area, like I think we couldn't and keep following with this pattern, then that's going to be Euro USD going up, right? And so that would not um, be, you know, that would obviously be not, not be regarding this resistance, right? We would break this resistance and move up higher. So um, that again is why I am on the sidelines. And even though why a lot of people could argue and you might even be right to be able to get a nice little intraday trade in Euro USD, I personally am looking for that bigger move. Um, you know, the big move I'm really banking on is getting a sell on Euro USD at some point. You know, it might not happen for a few weeks. If this consolidation continues to last, you know, we have no idea exactly how in a perfect world we wanted to follow our structure. And in the past, you know, I've, I have very high accuracy. We do see sometimes a market move like exactly how I want it to. But, you know, I'm not the one person con as much as I wish I was the one person controlling the market. I am not. So um, that is that. And then let's just skip right on over to USD CAD. So similar thing with USD CAD, we have a strong reversal pattern that was created Friday, a lot of volatility on Friday. So um, there's definitely argument for upside right now for buyers, but I don't think that there's a really great risk to reward with that. Um, I still think that there's a possibility that USD CAD falls and we would need the dollar index to continue falling um, as well for this to follow through. But I'm still looking at a long-term buy somewhere around this area for USD CAD. So um, that is that. And then I do just want to hide everything really quickly because this is a pair. We are currently in a trade on this pair. Um, I don't want to give out the exact coordinates and whatnot just cause that wouldn't be fair to the people that are in the private group. But just to give you guys some, some nice price action, right? We have this, if you guys are familiar with a teacup formation, um, or a bull flag, lots of confluence to the upside. And I'll just kind of leave it at that. So uh, pound Swiss franc looks pretty nice. I would expect it to continue moving throughout the week. But other than that, guys, as far as the technical analysis goes, that's pretty much what I'm interested in right now. Um, a couple notable things, just I will say on AUD USD and NCD USD, uh, Friday's volatility created some strong bearish engulfing candles on both of these pairs. I would just say, what, in my opinion, guys, careful. You know, these could definitely be traps. Just just remember that if you take anything away from this, what I'm telling you guys right now, if anything, just one thing to just remember is that Fridays are kind of like, quote unquote, Fridays and Sundays are big trap days. I call them trap days because you'll see maybe some volatility, but that's not like the true move or true volatility because it's a lot, it's, you guys have to understand that we, retail traders, we don't move the market. We don't do anything. You know, you could have a thousand lots open on something and it's, um, you know, depending on, of course, depends on the broker and who they use as a liquidity provider, this and that. But at the end of the day, that's generally not like going to be enough, right? You have to have to actually have billions and billions of dollars or even tens of billions of dollars to have really even a, a tiny, tiny influence, tiny dent on the market. So we aren't going to do anything, but, you know, banks, close their positions, hedge fund managers, those types of things. Um, Christian, he says, any, any GJ ideas? I, I did look at GJ earlier, GJ, um, uh, as far as risk to reward, I'm not I'm not interested in getting in. But if you look to the left right now, there's not a whole lot of resistance until we get back up to the 148 area. So the most favorable direction is probably to the upside if you're looking for a bias. Um, and, all right, guys. So uh, if you're just looking for the technical analysis, you don't care about my strategy or how to be able to you know compound your wealth with forex. You don't have to stick around already. Um, Um, or if you've seen this already, you don't have to stick around. Sorry, guys. I thought I muted myself for a second. But um, I do just quickly want to share and take no more than five minutes of you guys' time, especially because I do see a lot of people that are new in here and share with you guys exactly how um, I build people's wealth, how I preach, and how I um, tell people, you know, this is, this is my philosophy and the way I see Forex. You know, and a lot of people get brought into Forex and they see it as like some get rich quick. And, and is it possible to flip your account? You know, can you do crazy things and do crazy numbers with Forex? Absolutely. Um, I think most of us, maybe even in here, if you've been in, with Forex for a while, you might've even had like a day, you know, or a week where you had a really strong week and you, you know, quote unquote flipped an account, right? You turned 500 bucks into $3,000 and you had the best feeling. And, you know, so you see the possibilities, but um, obviously I'm sure most of you guys that have been in that situation too, you lose, end up losing that money very quickly. And that's because you continue to use the same risk that you do. And so, you know, my, my philosophy is low risk and, you know, nice, slow, moderate returns and way, way better returns than any type of investment. So if you are currently invested in like a, 
IRA or the S&P 500, or if you are in Australia where I just recently was for six months, I think they call their right retirement accounts super funds out there. Um, so depending on, I'm sure there's a lot of people in here from a lot of different countries, but you probably have some sort of retirement account or some sort of way to invest, some sort of traditional quote unquote safe investment that if you're lucky is going to give you maybe 10% a year and you know it's going to be like a long generally 20, 30 long year investment or maybe of something with your job where you can invest into. So while you're at your career job for the next 20, 30 years, you put a little chunk of your paycheck into and after 20, 30 years, you know, you have maybe a couple hundred thousand dollars or maybe just shy of a million dollars or whatnot. So um, I'm going to show you guys a way to build your wealth. And a lot of people ask me, with Forex, you know, how much money do you need to trade Forex? And that's a very ambiguous question. And the reason that is, is because everybody has a different lifestyle. You know, some people might only need a thousand dollars to live on per month. Some of you guys might have a family of four and need 5,000 or $6,000 to live on. So obviously everybody has different needs, different lifestyle, different overheads. So, um, it's, yeah, I can't just say one number, um, that is going to set you free, but know that to be able to live off of Forex, you do need to have a good amount of money. So what I'm going to show you guys is a way to compound your account over time. So until you have a large enough account to where, you know, maybe you want to trade full time or you want to take your money and invest in other things like real estate or whatever, um, or crypto, or you want to open up your own business or you want to, you know, do whatever you want to do with it. Um, you know, if you don't have that type of money now to be able to do that, then I'm going to show you a way. Okay. So, um, a lot of you guys, again, might've seen this, but I just love showing this and, and I see a lot of you guys are new in here. So this is really like why I do Forex and it's, it is not a get, Forex is not a way to get rich quick overnight. It's not even, it's not even a way to get rich quick in a couple months or even a couple of years. It's something that is, is supposed to be treated as long-term, treat it like real estate, treat it like investing in stocks, treat it like investing in a retirement account. It shouldn't be looked at any other way than just that. But even if you don't have a lot of money, I'm going to show you a way that you can build your account. So let's say you take, um, you can take a $1,000 account and let's say you grow it 5% per month for the next 10 years. If you, and this is not in that, that, that would turn into $348,911 and 99 cents. So that's a, that's a lot of money. That's life changing money. I mean, I'm sure a lot of you guys could do a lot of with that money so you can see how just compounding and that's also taking into account that you never added more money into it, right? That's taking a thousand dollars and never touching it and growing 5% a month. Now keep in mind guys that this 5% per month isn't always 5% per month. And what, and I know that sounds weird when I say that, but what I mean by that is I like to look at it at a 60% per year, where if you were to break it down to a 5% per month average, it's, or a, a per month average, it's 5% per month. But obviously it's investing guys. You're going to have your ups. You're going to have your downs. You're going to have your awesome months. You're going to have your bad months. It's all about controlling your risk and your risk ratio with your trades and keeping low risk. But you, you might have a month uh, for us, an example, just a few months ago, July, two months ago, we had a, it was a, almost a 15% month. It was like a 14 and a half percent month. And then August was we, at one point we were up about 7%. We had a couple losing trades towards the end of the month that brought us down to about 1% growth or at break even. So then we have a break even month. And then this month uh, we were, we had a winning trade and then we had a losing trade. So we are at break even for the month so far, but if we have some good trades, let's say we end off this month, 8%, 10%, 12%, somewhere around that range, or even at 5%. Overall, what I'm trying to get at guys is at the end of 12 months, if you can be at 60%, then that is 5% growth per month. And if you can average that every year consistently, for the next 10 years, you can grow an account even if you don't have a ton of money. Um, and that's, that's the whole philosophy, guys. I mean, that, that's what it's about. It's not about making a quick buck in Forex. And I mean, if, you, if you're about that, then that's great. I mean, there's people out there that teach that. I just don't think that that's the right way to approach Forex as a flipping account way because the simple way is, guys, is if you, if you want to get high returns, you're going to have to use high risk. It's as simple as that. You want high returns, you want, you're going to have to go high risk. And even 5% per month is way, way, way better. That's, we're talking 60% a year, guys. You know, talk to any, talk to your parents. Talk, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming most of you guys watching this are young. Talk to your parents. But if you, if you are older and you, and you are familiar with investing, you'll already know 
that 60% a year is, is phenomenal gains. Even half of that, even reaching half of our target at two and a half percent per month at 30% a year, that's, that's, that is already more than triple quad, almost quadruple what most people's average returns are in a, in a traditional type of, um, in a traditional type of investment scenario. And we aren't even using high risk, you know, I'll just quickly tie it, finish it with showing you guys how we're using low risk or how you can get these, these very nice returns. But I like to just show this, just going to get straight to it. Just a very quick example, take 10 trades, 10 trades in a month. I'm very quality over quantity. I'm not about taking 10 trades a day, taking trade, taking a hundred trades a month, anything like that about being in the market all day, every day. Um, you know, we, I like to be in the market, but obviously I look for high probability setups. So let's just take this example. We take 10 trades an entire month. Let's say, um, let's be super, you know, super, uh, super conservative, right? And let's say six trades lose and only four trades win. So you have a 40% win rate. Okay. So we lost a lot of trades, right? So you, so you, you, you know, if you're obviously going high risk, you can imagine that this is going to, you're going to have a blown account. You're not going to have anything left with, but this is the beauty of good risk to reward ratios. So six lose, four win. If you're risking, this is the golden thing right here, guys. And this is, this is a lot of money right here. A lot of people don't understand this. If you risk 2%, and you stay consistent, no matter how good the trade is. I have people asking me, you know, it, it, David, if the trade is super, super good and the trade looks really, really good, can I risk, you know, 10% of my account, 20% of my account? No, absolutely not. That's what you have to train yourself is the men mental side of trading is that no matter how good a trade looks, it can look a million things can be pointing in your direction, but no matter how good it looks, you're consistent with your risk management. You use 2% risk for at least 4% gain. So that means you're looking to make at least double what you risk on every single trade that, you know, the way you set up your trade and the way you do your analysis on the market, you make every single trade at least a one to two risk to reward or higher. So this 4% has a prob probability to be much higher, but this, this 2% is never going to stay. Um, anything is never going to go above 2%. Let's just say six lose. So you have six that lose, you lose 2% on each of them. You lose 12%. And let's say, with these four, you win at least 4% on each of them. You average 4%, then you make a net 16%. You still have made 4% on your account. Even with a negative win rate, right? Even losing more trades overall long-term, right? Because you take 100 trades, you're going you're gonna to lose 60 of them. And you're, you're always, you know, with this scenario, always losing more trades than you're winning you're still winning at the end of the day. You're still technically winning because you're using good risk management. So if you can consistently set up your trade, so it all, it all comes down to this risk ratio. You know, everything changes. This number down here changes drastically if this risk ratio changes, okay? Um, but I'll give you an example right now. Um, this, this pound Swiss franc trade, just to give you guys an idea, um, I'm just going to pause the share real quick and just, oh, I actually just showed it. Wow. Gosh, I'm so dumb. Okay. Well, you guys just saw that. So um, it's, it's a 4.0. It's, oh wait, maybe you guys didn't see that. I didn't, I didn't switch the share screen. Okay. That's cool. Um, it's a 4.0 risk to reward. So with this particular trade, for example, and most of my trades are much higher than this. So for this example right now, we're risking 2% of our account and everybody that's connected to the trade copier and everybody in the group and everybody that took the signal, if you're using the recommended risk, we're risking 2% to make 8.22%. So this is, you know, rate, it's, I'm, I'm doing double, I'm doing, you know, quadruple, but a double what my minimum is, quadruple what I'm risking. So that's what it's about is, is getting that good risk to reward on your trades. Okay. Um, let's see what we got in here. Hey bro, what is the site you took to use to get your lot size when you trade? Yes. Same. Thank you, William. So I'll go on here right now very quickly. So um, just, and then just to tie it all together. Okay guys. Um, here is, I use this every single time religiously guys, like literally if you aren't using this religiously on every single trade, okay, you are, messing up. Okay. I guys, I don't do also just my own trading. I don't just have a trade copier. I also work for a firm that is based out of London and I manage a, a, a multiple six figure 
fun with them as well, where we have, you know, profit splitting agreement and whatnot. But so I do institutional trading as well. But, and I, and so I use this on every single time guys, like literally there, there hasn't been a single time in the past two years that I can think of that I didn't open this more than two years, three years consistently that I have not used this on a single trade. Okay. So like if you aren't using this on every single trade, you're fucking up. Okay. Straight up, like straight to the point, you're going to lose all your money because there's no way you're, you could have a, a super high IQ and be a, be a, a math whiz, but there is absolutely no way you're going to be able to do in, do it in your head exactly what the right percentage is every single time. So you need to be using this every time. So you put in your account size, let's say you're trading. I mean, um, let's be realistic for most of you guys watching. Let's say you're trading a $2,500 account, 2% risk. You know, the trade that we're in right now, if let's say you were taking the signal manually, you weren't connected to the trade copier, then you're going to go to GBP Swiss franc. And then you put in the stop loss, whatever it was. I mean, the stop loss was much smaller than this, but let's say it was 82 pips. I think it was like a third of that. I think we had like a 20 pip stop loss or something, but calculate that. It tells you, boom, okay, use a 0 0.05. You know, you could round that up, maybe 0 0.06 stop loss uh, or, or 0 0.06 loss size. You need to use this on every single trade, guys, okay? Oh, you, aren't, you are not seeing a, a screen. Sorry, yes. Okay. You guys, you guys should see it now, okay? Every single time, this right here, position size calculator, and shout out to William Ramsey. Thank you. He put it inside the chat room, guys. It is right in the chat. If you're in the chat, it's right here. I mean, you literally can just Google it. You don't even have to use this one. Just any position size calculator on any website. You need to be using this every single time. No excuses. If you're trading off your phone, bookmark it. If you, I don't recommend really doing like a lot of trading off your phone, but if you're doing trading off your phone, bookmark it. If you're doing trading on your computer, bookmark it. Okay. Like keep this stuff. You guys need to you know, start taking this stuff seriously. Okay. If, if, especially if like, if you're trading on your own, you need to start taking Forex seriously. No sense in, in throwing money. Oops. I did it again. Gosh, dang it. Okay. Um, all right guys, but that is it. Um, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. I didn't want to make this super long, but I did the technical analysis side was very quick. So I just wanted to make sure you guys had some good information in here. Um, other than that, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me on any form of social media. I will try to get back to you within 24 to 48 hours. Other than that, guys, um, have a great week, great trading week. Uh, if you're in the free group, I'll see you guys on next week's Weekly Outlook. If you are in the premium group, I'll see you guys tomorrow for the daily webinar. Take care, guys, and have a great week.